Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV. I'm out here in Idaho today recording, obviously, at an event that will be over long before you see this footage, uh, with a brand new floor plan that just came out from the uh, Wildwood and Salem Laminated Divisions here, the 22RK Hyperlite, 22RK HL. Now, um, they're certainly not the first to jump into a floor plan like this, but what I really like is they literally, they didn't just copy and paste the same floor plan that everybody else is making. It's very similar, obviously, but they, they really listened to all the things that every other builder of a layout like this wasn't doing, and they incorporated it. Like, uh, more space around the toilet in the bathroom, far better pantry space, and even a little outdoor kind of camp kitchenette that I've not seen, at least, anybody else making a layout have anything like this. Um, now, this should be very good fit for a lot of half tons with the wide stance axles. Now on Goodyear tires for the 2023 season. Um, and they've gone carpetless slides for 23. Also, that is like a basically like a floor flush slide. They didn't do the step up slide like almost everybody else does. So what that means is that it, it's far more comfortable actually using the kitchen in this one. Like I said, they, they, they took all the feedback and all the other little hiccups that everybody else was suffering from and they they tried to fix them here uh there's a lot of really good like tank heaters like uh we're looking at optional factory solar package they're now prepped for a, a roof ladder um they have a, a bigger air conditioner now standard but there are still a couple things i would personally like to see fixed um it's a camp queen, and I know that that's going to be an instant all-stop deal breaker for some people, but they do one of the very best jobs, like the headboard power pockets that I've seen from any builder. And that's the thing, every brand has some things they do better than others, and that's what I like to do, is show you where they each shine, and maybe some points of consideration. So let me know where you think they nailed it, where you think they failed it, and if you appreciate the fair way we go about this, and getting you the new floor plans here, even a couple time zones away from home, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video, and let's get in there. And, and, you know, I think it'd be very easy just to discredit this one and discount it as just the the most recent Johnny-come-lately jumping on a floor plan uh, fad and trend. But the fact is, like I said, if you hang with me here, if you watch enough of this, I think you're going to see that they, they I, I feel, they did just enough different to really kind of give this one its own sort of DNA. Sometimes it pays not to be the first builder of a floor plan because that allows them to kind of do things a little bit differently. Now, um, like I said, they're not the first ones to make this layout. And certainly, if I just stand back here at a glance, you're like, uh, dude, that's like exactly the same as everybody else. Well, certain things didn't need to change. They only changed what some people were asking for. Like, uh, I'm going to slide over here to the theater seat to give you what I call the view from the driver's seat. So if I sit right down here, you are directly across from the entertainment center. Now, again, I like to be fair. That TV is up pretty high. But if you kick back on the recliners, you kind of get like a, a, a real good sort of direct view of it, like I'm kind of simulating right here. Now, as I'm sitting down here, something I didn't notice, because I'm tall, so I missed stuff. Look at the household and USB outlets under that overhead entertainment center. Now, they're up a little high, but like if you wanted to just kind of dangle down a USB cord or something to, to charge up a phone or anything... I could see that working. I could see this working as a little bit of a desk station. Uh, one of the very first things I would do if I bought this RV is I would get rid of that whole pedestal system. I'd keep the tabletop and I would purchase off of like Amazon or something like that, a set of free floating folding legs and I would convert that into a free floating table. Um, these are all sealed edge thermal foil counters. Now, typically Hyperlites offer either a uh you know table and chairs or the booth dining like we're looking at right here i i haven't i don't have the option sheet in front of me this is a brand new floor plan i'd be surprised if they didn't offer that but every now and then you know i i i am surprised at funny little things something else that is not as obvious from the outside is the door side window coverage in this doesn't suck especially since based on your feedback they include a window in the door this year now i've got a couple nitpicks like the fact that you can't put, it's not privacy shade prepped, it's just a window. So if you wanted to kind of block that off, you're gonna have to come up with some kind of solution. Thankfully, that's not too terribly hard. I do like also the number of cross breeze windows, like that giant toothpick window. And it's like, anywhere you see a window in this living area, you're going to see uh, it's, it's matching pair directly on the other side over here. Uh, you may also notice again, those uh, blackout roller shades 
Uh, if you want lots of privacy, you want to make sure the sun can't bug you, you're going to be good to go. Now down here, they do have that theater seat is extremely not cuddle compliant, but it is made for the two-fisted drinking kind of folks. You've got mine and yours left and right, uh, drinking the left and the right kind of hand sides. Although, you know, you could use one cup holder for a drink. And then you can use one cup holder for a um, uh, remote control or phone or something like that. So it doesn't have to be just drinks. They don't uh, go with a um, like full surround sound speaker system, although a lot of brands have gone away from that. Personally, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I, I don't mind seeing them like this. They just have that nice little sound bar right there. Personally, I kind of prefer that. And I don't know if they did it on purpose or not, but there's like just enough room here. If I wanted my phone plugged into that thing or something like that or some kind of music player, I, I could do that. Um, they do have outside speakers, but I've become more and more of a fan of just some kind of portable Bluetooth speaker on the uh, outdoors of the RV. See the air conditioner up there, centralized? That is now a 15,000 BTU air, although this floor plan never existed before that, but across the board in the hyperlights, they've gone to 15,000 BTU air conditioners, bigger airs. Uh, the RV is six and a half foot tall on the inside with a vaulted exterior roof line. It's linear on the inside, not, not like the bubble barreled ceiling or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> walking around, generally speaking, most people are going to be just fine in here. It's going to become a little bit of an issue for me when I'm in the shower, but overall, I, I got along in this one just fine. I don't usually get a chance to showcase the accent lights under sofas like that because usually I'm running off just 12 volt power. One of the benefits of being added display like this, I can use all the juice, 110, everything else. Now, if you notice, this is again, one of the major differences they made. Almost every builder who builds this floor plan, they have like a step up slide and there's a toe stub right in front of the kitchen. Now, you do kind of step into that kitchen slide. And again, totally being fair here, if you're taller like me, well, if you try to walk straight into that thing, you're going to have to duck. Otherwise, so, you know, kind of keep that in mind right there. But you get the idea. All right, guys, I'm Braden over at Bishes RV in Meridian. I just got some good news from our rep. We had a couple complaints about hitting your head every time you walk in this slide on this new Heritage Glen floor plan. Tell me about it. From here on out, they're actually going to bring that forward. So they're going to scoot this whole fridge forward, scoot the stove, microwave forward, so it's going to be flush within this slide so you're not banging your head anymore. That does leave space behind it. So what they're going to do with that, they're actually going to put outside storage in there, make sure there's absolutely no wasted space and everything's usable. Thank you, Brain. You can see how there's no heat vents in the floor. This is very pet friendly. They've also got some cool pet friendly kind of things on the uh, the exterior, but it's over here where they did a couple things a little bit differently. The the way that they adjusted the uh, the wall for the bathroom, there's more space beside you with the toilet. I'm going to demonstrate that in a bit. And as I back up here, they were able to include a far larger pantry or closet in that which is one of the areas that a lot of manufacturers kind of lack some features on here. Now that we've kind of got the general gist of this thing, let's dive a little bit deeper. Uh, of course, there's a little bit of storage on either side of that television. The booth dinette can fold down into a sleeper and there is storage below it. What is nice where some other brands kind of miss some things, they did include a privacy curtain here and the storage they have around their bed is not bad. You've got that, you know, normal foot locker style lift up easy lift storage. Um, I do like how they use struts on all their overhead cabinets, you might notice. And I think that they have one of the best headboard power pocket situations out there where you've got household and USBs on both sides of the bed. I am a big fan of those United States Bs. Neither here nor there, however. Um, the uh, blackout shades, again, keeping the sun from baking you. You have a choice in this between a 12 volt DC compressor fridge and an eight cubic foot gas electric two-way. The 12 volts about 10 cubic foot, a little bit bigger, but they really nailed, I feel, the total storage in this. I think the total dry storage in this model is fantastic. And you might be wondering, man, where's the outlets? Uh, with an inch and a half laminated sidewall, it's very difficult to actually install. Well, you really can't install an outlet in a sidewall unless it's going to stick out funky. And a lot of brands don't want to run wiring through walls because it can be difficult to kind of manage. So the outlets are under the overhead cabinets. I got you a little bit of a, uh, a peek at that there. Um, you know, like I said, every, every RV has some ups, has some downs. Oh shoot. One of the, the potential real hiccup deal breakers. I think I mentioned it when the video began. This is a camp queen bed and I'm standing right here next to it. I'm eyeballing it. 
I don't believe that a, a traditional 60 by 80 queen is going to be able to fit and allow the slide to close for road mode, but we are going to test that and check that in just a minute here. This right here, though, I thought was one of the major differences, including that big closet pantry kind of situation right there, that extra storage, the extra hanging space. Because one of the complaints that I've heard some people say uh, in relation to this floor plan from anyone who builds it is eh, not enough clothing storage. Well, that could potentially solve that little challenge. Now, as I mentioned, by, by kind of changing up the way the walls are set up here for the bathroom, they were able to give us uh, a lot better space around the toilet versus some brands that I've seen. A little sample of me there. I'm a righty, but lefties actually have even more space. Uh, even, you know, if you got a big old roll of Charmin over here on the butt napkin roller. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a nice little shelf there for some extra butt napkins. There is a single Rhino Beetle style uh, towel holder here, and they are using the Dollar Store 4-inch fart fan. Uh, it doesn't seem like many builders of this layout happen to be the brands that use the bigger fans, so just kind of keep that in mind. Now, headroom in the shower. My head absolutely has to be up in the bubble. I'm a little bit over six foot tall, but... The skylight's large enough and it's positioned correctly. That's not an issue. And did you notice how I had good elbow room in here? That's one of those rectangular. I believe that's going to be about a 30 by 36 inch kind of shower. So the space here in the bathroom actually is better uh, than a lot of the brands that I've seen build this. Now, again, being fair, some of the feedback that I've heard from some viewers is, oh man, I really hate that kitchen set or that bathroom setup. I don't want the bathroom right next to the kitchen. I don't want to crap where I eat is basically what people have said. And I get that. I respect that. I think that's just the nature of this floor plan. And that's just one of those things that that's just, it doesn't matter who builds it. It's just always going to be the case. And now with the slide closed for road mode, most of the builders who make this floor plan, I've seen as shallow as a 12 inch slide, uh, but typically about an 18 to 24 inch slide out. This is a full 36 inch slide out, which is why this one looks and feels bigger when it's open, because it quite literally is. The catch 22 of that is with a bigger, deeper slide, the slide has to retract further into the RV. So I was a little bit nervous as to what kind of traveling access you would have. Thankfully, now you might, depending on your size and stature, you may need to do a little bit of a sideways travel trailer two-step. At my size, that's pretty much what I'm going to have to do here. But the fact is, if you do need to navigate, you know, from the entry door to the kitchen to the bathroom, this one absolutely crushes the Cracker Barrel test. We are nap crap and snack-tastic. But this right here is one of the things I was saying, that this is a camp queen. And if you wanted just a traditional 60 by 80 queen bed, it's not going to work but I have an idea for you. So with this being a short queen, which is approved by the GBU, mind, mind you, that's the bed goblin union, those little creepy guys that live under your bed and they wanna rip your toes off if your feet hang off at the end of the night. Anyway, what you can do here is once you get to your destination, once you deploy that slide out and get it out of the way, get like a six inch spacer block or a, like a, a big like body pillow even could work or something like that. Pull the mattress down, stuff it up in the headboard area and then put your pillow over that and typically you never even notice that it's there, but that can give you the extra foot space and leg space that you might want and need for a more comfortable stay. Whether that works for you or not, I don't know. Uh, I just like to give you the information so that before you go driving four hours to visit one of our stores or before you buy one of these sight unseen online, which a lot of people do with us, you know exactly what you're getting or at least to the best degree that I can possibly give you that information. All right, so what's it take to tow this thing? As I kind of mentioned when the video began, I do feel um, this will qualify for a lot of half-ton towability. Now, if you've got an 03 half-ton with a rusty hitch and, uh, you know, the, the road salts from the Midwest have taken their toll on your chassis, yeah, maybe not. But uh, a lot of tow package half tons, especially late model tow package half tons, are going to handle this one just fine for you. I don't talk about this a lot, but this is one of my favorite features because this is one of those things you're going to actually appreciate every single trip, but it's never a big deal when people are shopping. The plug buddy. It's also got a set of safety chain hooks on it. Basically, you can keep your seven-way plug in there facing downward so that, you know, rainwater and, and snow and stuff 
doesn't foul that plug out, which is really, really nice. Uh, the safety chain hooks, also nice just to keep those things from just dangling on the ground or whatever. Man, they got this thing shined up looking good under these lights. Um, they put the biggest patio awning on this one they could. I think that's a pretty awesome feature. Obviously, you see the uh, LED lighting all along the base of it. And did you also notice for the 23 season, based on your feedback, largely off the videos that we're making here, they put a window in the door. That is not something they were doing previously. Now, slam latch baggage doors with magnet holdbacks and big baggage doors on both sides of the RV. That is something I really like. Um, so many manufacturers will give you only a big baggage door on this side, but the fact is, you're gonna use both sides of the RV, so why not give you, uh, you know, big doors on both sides? Well, they, they obviously do that here. Now, we're looking at one with the optional 200 watt solar package, and you can see the solar controller down below. Uh, solar controller, sounds cool, I like rhymes like that. Anyway, but you also see the battery disconnect up top there. I love where they place that. It's easy to reach, you just reach around the corner, turn it on, turn it off, whatever the case may be, but it's up high enough, and in the curvature of that nose, um, that shifting cargo is not gonna smash that thing. So it's sometimes it's just those little details that I see here uh, that I really like. And like I said, every RV has a couple cool things. Every RV has a couple uh, hard points. And again, we are in an active display today. So pardon me as I'm kind of working around folks sometimes. You see the, uh, the Moride stable steps right here. You can pull a couple pins. You can pull those things right off if you want to. Um, if for some reason you ever wanted to, I, I, I don't know why you'd want to, but you could. Directly under the awning, you got yourself the drunken Uncle Leash latch here in case Uncle Gary ties one on. You can tie him onto the RV so he doesn't go wandering. And new for 23, we've got the Goodyear Endurance radials here. Uh, that is uh, 87 mile an hour rated if you weren't aware. So you should never be towing that fast. Please don't tow 87 miles an hour. Um, not quite rated for time travel, which as we know is 88 miles an hour. You can't see much down here with the lighting in this display, but it is fully enclosed. It is forced air heated. It does have a radiant barrier through the entire belly to help give you uh, more consistent weather packaging. Um, it also has holding tank heaters standard on every holding tank on these, which is cool. But this right here, I've like whether it's the Imagine 22 MLE, the Cougar 22 MLS, uh, I think Sundance, Spirit, like 10 different brands make a floor plan like this. And these guys are the most recent, but I don't recall anyone else ever having an outdoor kind of kitchen entertainment combo center. And I like that they didn't go with the, the smaller outside fridge, they went with the bigger one. Um, and uh, you know, depending on which fridge you, you choose inside, 12 volt or two way, you can have as much cold storage in this RV as a fifth wheel, like a big luxury fifth wheel. Uh, out here we got our little uh, griddle station and that's all standard. You see the outdoor uh, entertainment hookups right here. So you can really, if you want to spend some time outside, you can really have a good time in this one. Now these have had a walkable roof, but nobody believed it because they never gave you a way to access the roof. So what they're doing now on the upper right hand corner of that rear wall is they are giving us prep for one of those handy dandy telescopic ladders. Now I happen to climb up on the, uh, the roof of the RV next to this because I, when I travel I can't exactly go go gadget stuff a ladder in my pocket. The uh, FAA doesn't really appreciate that too awful much you know. But I did get you some roof footage to give you a look here. Um, for the most part the workmanship looked clean. I like how they went with a white air conditioner shroud, which just allows that AC unit to operate at a little more peak efficiency because the unit itself is not getting cooked quite as hard from the sun since it's not a black shroud. Black absorbs more heat, as we know. Notice though, speaking of that, we do have tinted windows to help keep the sunshine out of this. Remember, you've got all those roller shades all the way around. Now the back of those roller shades, I don't have them pulled down, but the back of the roller shades is actually white. So that will act as like kind of a, a thermal reflector, uh, if you will. One of the other things that's really cool about this one, it does have a single stinky slinky hookup situation. You do not have a two stage uh, two headed sewer monster on this RV. So you've heard from me. Now I'd like to hear from you. How do they do? Um, is it just, do you think it's just another copy and paste and there's not enough originality here? Or did they change the recipe enough that this one garners some very serious attention? Like I said, there's things I really like about it and there's things that I'm like, mm, but 
Overall, I think it's a very strong contender. I think it could work very well for some people. And remember, whether it's called the Hemisphere or the Heritage Glen, the Salem or the Wildwood, we have these at a ton of Bish's RV locations. So check that link in the video description for pricing and availability. And uh, you can see where we have one parked, how it's equipped, what we're asking on an individual unit at any individual store. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.